the combined gas law. Boyle's law and Charles' law were nice if you're changing pressure and looking at the temperature and holding everything else constant. But what if you've got the pressure, the volume, and the temperature changing? And you know two of them and you need the third. We can combine the two laws into one that's known as the combined gas law. And if you look at this, you'll see that Charles' law and Boyle's law are both hidden in there, right? If I, if I block off the T's, I've got P1V1 equals P2V2. That was Boyle's law. And if I don't change the, the pressures, then I've got V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's Charles' law. So this is the combined gas law. Here we're assuming that the amount of gas is constant, and as always, the temperature has to be in kelvins. So P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Let's do an example of this. Our same process, but uh, our table is just going to have an extra column. Sample of gas has an initial volume of 158 milliliters at a pressure of 735 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. If the gas is compressed to a volume of 108 milliliters, and heated to a temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, what is its final pressure in millimeters of mercury? Okay, we read through the problem. It does not have to make any sense. Um, we're just going to make our table and get on with it. Probably not going to leave enough room, but that's okay. We'll make room. So one and two. So I'm going to go through again and pick out numbers. 158 milliliters. My pen's too fat. That's probably my problem. Well, that might be too skinny. 158 milliliters. What is that? Pressure, volume, temperature? That's a volume. Uh, this volume at this pressure, these guys go together. 735 millimeters of mercury. And it tells me that's a pressure. The unit also tells me it's a pressure. Temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. Just when I think I've worked out all the bugs with my stylus and my iPad, it acts up again. I have to convert that to Kelvin. Just do it right away because you'll forget otherwise. Um, 234 plus 273. So this is 307 Kelvin. And that's the temperature. So those, those were all together. If it's compressed to this volume, heated to that temperature, so that's the next set of conditions, so I'm going to put 108 milliliters in my volume column. And the temperature is 85, 85 degrees Celsius. So I take 85 plus 273 equals 358. And then I have one blank in my table. Always a good sign. I'm going to call that P2. Any questions yet? So here I have ones and twos, and I have V, P, and T. There, everything's changing, so I need the combined gas law. So P1, P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. This equation has fractions in it. Cross multiply to get rid of the fractions. P1, V1, T2 equals T1, uh, P2 times V2. And then this blank here, the P2, this is what I'm solving for. So that's this guy right here. So I need to divide by the other terms that are on that side with him. So I can shift them over to the other side. Those cancel out. 
these cancel out and I have to do the same thing to the other side. So there I've got my equation. I'm going to rewrite it. P2 <coughs> equals, copy carefully, very easy to exchange letters or numbers. P1 V1 T2 over T1 V2. And now I'm going to bring numbers in from my table. Pressure 1 was 735 millimeters of mercury. And then V2, no, V1 is 158. 158 milliliters. And T2 is 358. Good grief. 358 Kelvin. Then in the denominator, I've got T1, which is 307 Kelvin, and volume 2, which is 108 milliliters. Look at the units, make sure they work out all right. Kelvins cancel, milliliters cancel. I'm left with millimeters of mercury, which is the unit of pressure, so that's a good sign. Now, be careful when you plug this into your calculator. There are two numbers in the denominator, and so students often make a mistake. When I do this, I take the top 735 times 158 times 358, and I divide by 307, and I divide by 108. If that doesn't make sense to you, then you need to put parentheses around this bottom part. If you're going to if you if it only makes sense to you to multiply those, you need on your calculator to put parentheses around there. I see this mistake over and over and over again. And it's such a shame to do all this work, have learned about gas laws and do all the work and then get the wrong answer because you miscommunicated with your calculator. So if you don't have your calculator out, get it out and let's make sure we can all come up with the same answer. Because unlike many things in life, to problems like these, there is one right answer, which is one of the things I like about it. 735 times 158 times 358 divided by 307 divided by 108. And I'm getting 1250, um, well, it should have three significant figures, so 1250. And the unit is millimeters of mercury. The other way you can enter that in your calculator is 735 times 358 times, I'm sorry, I missed the 158 in there. Start over. 735 times 158 times the 358 divided by, and then open the parentheses, 307 times 108, close the parentheses, and press equals. You'll get the same answer. If you're getting something else, you're communicating incorrectly with your calculator. I can't deal with that in a lecture situation, but we need to take care of that, and please come and talk to me or talk to a tutor or somebody and get it straight. Okay? Any questions? Let's do another one. A balloon has a volume of 3.7 liters at a pressure of 1.1 atmospheres and a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. If the balloon is submerged in water to a depth where the pressure is 4.7 atmospheres and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, what will its volume be? Assume that any changes in pressure caused by the skin of the balloon are negligible. So that parentheses in there, that's the fine print. We can ignore that. So we read the question. Now we're just going to pull out numbers again. Make my table. 
I've got condition one and two. And go through 3.7 liters is the first number I come to. That's a volume. Next is a pressure of 1.1 atmospheres. So that's pressure and a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. And I see degrees Celsius and I say, oh, wait, I have to convert that to Kelvin. And so that's going to be 303 Kelvin. And that's the temperature. That is the first set of conditions for the balloon. Now it's submerged in water. This is the new pressure. This is the new temperature. So I'm going to put those in. New temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. So I have to change that to Kelvin. That's going to be 288. And I have a blank, and I'm going to call that V2 because it's the V column in the second row. What equation do I need for this? The combined gas law. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. I'm going to cross multiply to get rid of the pesky fractions. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, what, what am I solving for here? I'm solving for V2. That's over here. I'm going to divide by these guys. Get rid of them. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. I have to treat both sides of an equality the same. Once you get the hang of the technique for doing these problems, they're all mostly the same. Make a table, rearrange the equation, plug the numbers in. P1, V1, T2 over T1, P2. Pressure 1, 1.1 atmospheres. Volume 1, 3.7 liters. Temperature 2, 288 Kelvin. Divided by temperature 1, 303 Kelvin, and pressure 2, 4.7 atmospheres. Atmospheres cancel and Kelvin's cancel. The units on volume and pressure can be pretty much anything as long as they're the same for V1 and V2, P1 and P2, because they'll end up canceling out but the temperature has to be in kelvins. So I'm going to do the math here. 1.1 times 3.7 times 288 divided by 303 divided by 4.7 and I'm going to get a volume of 0 0.82 liters. In doing the sig figs on that, I look, the pressure's two, the volume's two, temperatures are three, um, so I'm limited to two significant figures. Any questions?